Marinette Hits Her Head, a miraculous ladybug fan fiction, written and narrated by Christina Chang. Chapter 17, Back to Normal. I don't know, Tiki, maybe I should rethink this, Marinette said nervously, biting her fingertips as she paced back and forth across her bedroom. I mean, how important is school anyway? Tiki gave her a pointed look, but smiled encouragingly. We've been through this already, Marinette. You're going to be fine. But what if it's not fine, Tiki? Marinette exclaimed, throwing her arms about wildly. What if I stumble over my report, forget my presentation, and mix up everyone's names? If they thought I was a disaster before, they'll surely think I'm a disaster now, and no one will feel guilty for abandoning me because I don't even know who they are. No one is going to abandon you, Marinette, especially just because you make a small mistake, Tiki responded reasonably. Everyone knows it might take a while for you to get back in the swing of things, but the important thing is that you're trying and your friends are all looking forward to seeing you. But that's just it. Everyone knows me, but I don't know them. I'll be an imposter, and the more people spend time with me, the more they'll realize I have no idea what I'm doing. Tiki tapped her shoulder consolingly. Just be yourself, Marinette. That's why they became friends with you in the first place. Marinette sighed. I guess... She sat down at her desk and tapped her fingers restlessly as she tried to glance over her notes, then groaned in frustration. Ugh, oh, this is pointless, Tiki. I'll never be able to catch up. A loud crash came from outside and Marinette sprung to her feet. Finally, something useful to do. Tiki, spots on! Ladybug jumped up onto the balcony and leapt off in the direction of the sound. She was glad to be back on duty again, and she had been feeling so much stronger, even without her suit, that she had finally been able to convince her parents to try letting her go back to school, a decision she was already regretting. Ladybug tried to push those thoughts from her mind as another loud crash echoed through the streets, and she readied her yo-yo for action. But when she ran to the corner, she was surprised to find a row of trucks and workers as a demolition crew oversaw the controlled destruction of a building that was already looking half-torn down. One of the workers caught sight of her and waved her over. Good evening, Ladybug. Is there anything I can help you with? Ladybug stiffened, then tried to appear confident as she replied, Oh, I just heard the crash and wanted to make sure everyone was all right. I didn't realize there was a demolition job going on. A few of the men snickered in the background, but the worker she was talking to smiled kindly. With all those crazy supervillains stomping around, I can see why it'd be easy to mix up. It's really quite impressive how quickly you and Cat Noir appear on the scene. Paris would be a nightmare without you two. Though, thankfully, everything here is under control, so there's no need to take up your time. Ladybug nodded appreciatively as she took a few steps back. Okay, I'll be on my way then. Good luck on your project! She zipped away to the shadowed safety of a darkened rooftop and breathed in deeply. Well, that was awkward. If she hadn't been in such a rush to avoid her own problems, she probably could have gotten her facts straight before jumping into the thick of things. Hey, milady, any sign of the Akuma? Ladybug startled, then relaxed at the sight of her partner. False alarm, it's just a demolition crew tearing up an unsafe building. Kanawar glanced curiously in the direction of the noise. Oh, you mean that rickety one we fell through once? Yep, Ladybug replied, a slight blush filling her cheeks as she remembered their long walk together where Cat Noir had taken her hand and used his night vision to lead them out of the half-broken building. She sat down with a muffled sigh, and Kanawar watched her curiously as he sat down beside her. You seem a little disappointed. Were you hoping for something more exciting to fight? Ladybug straightened defensively. No, I mean, of course I don't want anyone to be hurt or akumatized, and I'm glad we didn't have to fight anyone. It's just... She glanced down and lowered her voice. When I'm Ladybug, I don't really have to think. I just act and everything comes naturally and falls into place. When I'm... myself, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And I feel like I'm going to constantly let everyone down. Kanawar had been listening sympathetically, but now shook his head with a smile. I'm sure you're not letting anyone down, my lady. What makes you say that? Ladybug shrugged. Well, now that I don't have my memories, everyone knows me, but... You don't know yourself? Kanawar finished knowingly. Ladybug nodded. I'm going back to school soon, and at first I thought that's what I wanted, but now I'm a nervous wreck. She exclaimed, throwing her arms up emphatically before quickly folding in on herself again. I'm not as worried about the academic part. Facts are one of the few things that stuck with me, and I wrote out most of my report before my accident, so all I have to do is present it. It's more the social aspect that worries me. 
Kenwar smiled slightly. I can relate. I was homeschooled most of my life, so when I started going to public school, everything about it was pretty new to me. I wanted to make friends so badly, but I was worried about what they'd think of me. Ladybug eyed him curiously as he continued. It was a little hard at first, but now that I've gotten the hang of things, it's one of my favorite places to be, and I'm friends with pretty much everyone in my class. Ladybug crossed her arms with a dry smirk. Yeah, well that's probably because you were your awesome self. I have a feeling it'd be a lot harder for me. Kenwar laughed and smiled encouragingly. Well, I am pretty awesome, but you're awesome too, and if you're able to figure out complex riddles and intricate battle strategies, I'm sure you'll have no problem adjusting to public school life. His eyes sparkled with sincerity as he stared affectionately into hers. You're amazing, Ladybug. You're kind, thoughtful, and creative, always looking out for others and willing to lend a hand. Anyone would be lucky to have you for a classmate. Besides, a wise person once said, if it doesn't work out the first time, maybe all you need is a second chance, he added, gently nudging her with his elbow as she ducked her head with a smile. Just be yourself, Ladybug. Everything will work out fine. I am so late, Marinette moaned, barely remembering to send her parents a quick wave before racing out the door. Well, if it's any comfort, you're making better time than you usually do. Tiki said with a cheerful grin. Their words were almost lost in the rush of morning traffic, and Marinette shifted impatiently as she waited for the light to turn green. Of course my first day back has to be rainy, Marinette grumbled, raising her bag over her head as she tried to dodge in between droplets and dashed her way up the steps into the school courtyard. You'll be fine, Marinette. Just remember, hi Tiki, someone's coming, Marinette exclaimed in a hushed whisper, snapping her purse shut as a tall imposing figure strode into view. Well, if it isn't Marinette Dupen Chang. Marinette stiffened as the blonde girl eyed her warily. Just be yourself, she repeated mentally, then brightened with a warm smile. Hi, it's nice to meet you. Sorry I don't remember your name, but if you're willing to give me a chance, I'd love to be friends again. The blonde girl's eyes widened in disbelief, then narrowed into a smile that seemed almost crafty, though Marinette didn't have a chance to think about it as the strange girl threw an arm around her shoulders and chuckled loudly. Of course you want to be my friend, Marinette. I'm the most popular girl in school, and all of Paris, really, and you wouldn't know anyone if it wasn't for me. You always agree with whatever I say because you and I are so alike, and I have awesome ideas. Oh, but... Marinette began uneasily, but stopped as the girl briskly took a hold of her shoulders and started steering her to the other classrooms. Come on, I'll show you around. A little baker girl like you could get lost in a place like this. But don't worry, the exceptional Chloe will look after you. Marinette raised an eyebrow. Are you Chloe? The girl let out an arrogant laugh. Of course I'm Chloe. Who else could be this fabulous? Marinette stayed silent as the girl steered her around and pointed out random rooms and classmates, mostly emphasizing how lame they were or who to avoid, and Marinette didn't miss the suspicious looks and narrowed glares they got as they walked by. Why does everyone seem so unhappy? Chloe sighed as she spun Marinette to face her. I hate to be the one to have to tell you this, but it's because most people here don't like you. Not after what you did. Marinette's eyes widened in alarm. Why not? What did I do to make them not like me? Chloe leaned forward conspiratorially. Well, one time your dad was giving a cooking demonstration, and you were so embarrassed of him that you pulled the fire alarm, and the whole school got punished because of it. Plus, you tend to be a bit of a glory hog and always want your way all the time. Marinette looked down shamefully. What? But that's so awful. I can't imagine I'd be so embarrassed of my dad to do something like that. Chloe shrugged. Yeah, it was pretty terrible, but don't worry. That's what your new, I mean, old BFF is for. I'll make sure you don't push your way where it's not wanted. And since everyone adores me, they'll eventually learn to accept you too. Marinette tilted her head doubtfully. I thought Ollie was my best friend. That glasses nerd? She has been trying to bully and manipulate you into trusting her from the moment she got into this school. Don't tell me you finally fell for it. But she... Ugh, I can't believe this! Chloe exclaimed, an ugly mope filling her face as she raised an arm to her head dramatically. You promised you'd never betray me. We'd be best friends forever. And then after one little knock on the head, you completely turn your back on your word and replace me? No, no, I... no. Marinette said desperately, glancing around self-consciously as students turned to look at them and Chloe wailed miserably. 
I'm sure you're a great friend, and I'm not replacing you. Besides, someone can have more than one best friend, right? Chloe rose to her full height, and the tears cut off immediately as she scoffed in annoyance. Don't be ridiculous. There can only be one best of everything, and that's me. She sniffed offendedly, then grabbed Marinette's arm again. Well, I suppose I can let it slide this one, since you are confused and all, and I can't blame you for being so ridiculously misguided. Marinette followed uneasily as Chloe all but dragged her into the hallway, where they almost bumped into another girl with short red hair and white glasses. Oh, this is Sabrina. She's basically our servant and does whatever we tell her to, or whatever I tell her to, but since you're my BFF, she has to listen to you too. Sabrina's brow furrowed anxiously. But Chloe, I thought I was your best friend. Marinette glanced over at Chloe, who waved her hand dismissively. Shut up, Sabrina, as if anyone would want to have you as a best friend. You're more of a glorified secretary, and you're lucky I spend any time with you at all. Marinette clenched her fist angrily as Sabrina's eyes filled with tears, and she briskly stepped free of Chloe's hold. All right, that's enough, Chloe. You have no right to talk to anyone like that, and I have a feeling we weren't really best friends. From what I've seen, you're a mean, arrogant, small-minded person who only thinks about herself. And unless you change, you're going to have no friends at all if you keep acting like that. Chloe glared back at her and leaned forward maliciously. As if, Baker girl. Like I said before, everyone hates you. And I'm glad I don't have a pathetic loser like you as a friend. Marinette stared back at her in calm defiance. Even if what you said is true, which I'm pretty sure it wasn't, I know one thing for certain. You and I are nothing alike. She turned and primly stalked into the classroom, where she was suddenly met with cheers and smiles as dozens of students crowded around her. She glanced around in wonder as pink balloons decorated the walls and a brightly colored banner read, Welcome back, Marinette, in bold letters. Marinette, you're back! Marinette, it's good to see you! Hey, Marinette, did you become telepathic after your head injury? Marinette waved and smiled shyly as she was bombarded with hugs and questions, some of which she didn't understand, but it felt so nice to be welcomed and her heart lightened as her classmates chatted warmly around her. A brisk clap cut through the noise and the students filed to their seats as a kind-faced woman stood at the center. All right, class, we're all very happy to welcome Marinette back to our classroom. Marinette felt her cheeks grow warm as the teacher smiled cordially in her direction and all eyes pointed to her. And I'm sure you will all have a chance to talk with her now that she's feeling better. However, this is still a school day and we have some presentations to cover. There were a few good-natured groans as people shuffled with their books and Marinette breathed a quiet sigh of relief as the attention died down and things seemed to settle into their normal routine. Sorry, girl, I heard what happened in the hallway and I had no idea Chloe was going to corner you like that. Ollie whispered as she guided Marinette into a seat beside her. When she found out about the surprise party and stormed out of the classroom, I thought she went off to sulk somewhere, not trick you into being her accomplice. But I should have known you'd be clever enough to straighten her out on your own, she added, giving Marinette a complimentary shove with her elbow. Marinette grinned and turned her attention back to the front as a girl in a green sweater with brightly colored buttons began a very engaging speech on urban ecology. What? Marinette's at school today? Adrian exclaimed. A mix of excitement and despair filling his voice as he glanced at the text message Nino had sent him, then back at the long string of clothes he still had to try on for his father's last-minute design changes. What is it, Adrian? Adrian glanced up at Natalie, who was studying her clipboard and eyeing him warily. Your father needs to get this line out by next weekend, and if you keep dilly-dallying, we'll be here all day. Please, Natalie, I have to be at school today. It's really important. Natalie sighed. We've been over this, Adrian. Your father already contacted the school and secured permission for you to have the day off, and you've already missed half of it. What is so important all of a sudden? Myrna is back. Natalie raised an eyebrow with an almost amused expression that softened her generally stoic face. Oh, your friend. Adrian missed the sarcasm as he nodded pleadingly. Myrna is very special to me, and this is the first time she's gone back to school in months. I have to be there. Couldn't you just match the measurements to one of my other shirts? Natalie glanced at the rows of seamstresses and photographers, then back to the door where his bodyguard was waiting dutifully. I suppose I could inform your father that there will be some minor delays. Adrian brightened gratefully as he gave her an impulsive hug. Oh, thank you, Natalie, thank you! Natalie shook her head as she watched him race out the door, then set about rearranging his schedule. Oh, I forgot my books back at the science lab. I'll meet up with you back at class! Ollie called over her shoulder. 
leaving Marinette to navigate the large bustle of students on her own. Marinette wandered the halls, somehow knowing which direction to take even though the surrounding faces were all strange to her. Or they had been, until she ran through the doorway of her classroom and came to a sudden halt as she spotted a boy whose infuriatingly perfect face had been haunting her for weeks, and he appeared to be having a conversation with the horrible blonde girl she'd been fooled by earlier, who was now wrapping herself assertively around his arm. Marinette! His familiar green eyes lit up as he caught sight of her, and he looked as if he were about to run up and give her a hug, but drew back as she stared at him coldly. You're with her? Adrian's eyes widened, and he waved his hands defensively. No, it's not like that. I... Of course he is, the blonde girl, Chloe, cut in. We've been friends ever since we were teeny tiny tots, weren't we, Adrienkins? She clung to Adrian possessively and placed an overly friendly kiss on his cheek. Marinette had had enough and turned away. Keeping her chin high, she walked haughtily to her seat. Get off me, Chloe, she heard Adrian grumble irritably, firmly removing himself from her grasp and sending Marinette an apologetic look that she pretended not to see. Marinette determinedly buried her nose in her book and would have kept it there if it weren't for a sharp poke that made her cough back a squeak. Alia raised her eyebrows reprovingly, then nodded toward the boy sitting in front of them, whose shoulders were slightly hunched and his head was lowered dejectedly. Marinette rolled her eyes as she whispered, Forget it, Alia. That ship has sailed, and besides, you've seen how he is with Chloe? Alia merely chuckled. Yeah, I thought he was a stuck-up Chloe's buddy at first, too, but we were totally wrong about him. Adrian is nothing like Chloe, and he's only friends with her because she used to be the only friend he had. Yikes, bad judgment, too, Marinette muttered stubbornly, though she knew she was being rather unfair, and her heart softened a bit as she thought of a lonely boy isolated from the world with no one but that selfish girl for company. Try loyal and forgiving to a fault, Ollie replied, then sighed huffily. Look, I'm not saying you have to fall in love with the guy. I'm just saying you should give him a chance and stop acting like such a snob. Marinette ducked her head guiltily. Yeah, you're right. Still, avoidance seemed easier than an apology, and if he hadn't wanted people to think he agreed with Chloe, he shouldn't let her climb all over him like that. For the next few hours, she purposely busied herself with one of the other students whenever he tried to approach her, and would glance away or change direction whenever he caught her eye. What, is he always staring at me? Marinette muttered irritably to herself then blushed as she realized she'd been keeping track of him almost as much as he was trying to interact with her. Just to avoid him, not because she found him attractive or anything. She knew she took it too far in gym class when they were playing soccer and she deliberately pretended not to see him and took the shot on her own, when she could have passed it to him for a chance to win the whole game. Alia had been giving her the stink eye all afternoon, and Nino merely looked confused. Then Adrian finally seemed to take the hint and began keeping his distance. But instead of making her feel better, Marinette just felt guilty, and the mournful, injured puppy looks he sent her were definitely not helping. Marinette, Tiki began in a warning tone, but Marinette quickly hushed her. No, no, Tiki, we'll talk later. She felt bad as she knew she was acting a bit unreasonably, but she brushed it off with a sigh. She just needed some time to think, not to mention prepare for her upcoming presentation, and the library would be the perfect place to do so. She crept through the wide, stately doors and felt a slight sense of security wash over her as she wove her way through the tall shelves and grew lost in her own little world. You know, that book might make more sense if you read it right side up. A soft voice spoke from behind, and Marinette stumbled in surprise, nearly crashing backwards into a stack of shelves if it weren't for two arms reaching out to steady her, and she fell forwards into something soft and warm instead. Marinette's face burned as she found herself clutching Adrian's overshirt, and she hurriedly shoved away from him. Are you okay? He asked hesitantly, then rubbed a hand self-consciously against his neck. Sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. Marinette lifted her chin slightly. Well, you should think of that before sneaking up on people. She glanced down as she added, And I'm fine. Thanks. He looked about to say more when Marinette quickly gathered her things and stepped away from him, saying dismissively, now, if you'll excuse me. She turned as if to leave, but tripped over a loose pile of books and was sent sprawling to the ground with papers flying in all directions and a collection of novels tumbled down around her head. She bit back tears as she squeezed her eyes shut and remained miserably face down on the floor, waiting for the light aches and stings from her fall to fade and begging the floor to swallow her up before her warranted humiliation did it for her. This is the worst first day ever, 
She muttered inwardly, slowly rolling over to a sitting position and bracing herself for whatever look of pity or contempt Adrian was giving her, if he was even still around at all. Her eyes widened and her mind fell into a stunned silence, as instead of disdain or mockery, she was met with caring eyes, filled only with compassion and concern as Adrian extended his hand out to her. Marinette. Thunder rumbled from outside, and her heart fluttered as he said her name with such tenderness and sincerity. A strange current rippled through her arm as she slipped her hand into his, and it gently helped her to her feet. She stared up at him in awe as he gave her a small smile, then released her hand apologetically. Sorry about what happened with Chloe. Ollie told me how she tried to manipulate you, and I wanted you to know that I don't agree with what Chloe does, or like when she flaunts me around like that. I'm only friends with her because I want to encourage her to be a better person, but that line of friendship stops when it comes between me and you. I've never been to school before. I've never had any real friends. I know you don't remember me, but we were really good friends before, and I hope we can be once again. Adrian? Marinette stared back into his shining green eyes as thousands of small pieces started merging together in her mind all at once. I remember you. You gave me your umbrella. He gasped softly, then his face brightened in amazement, and he nodded eagerly. Yes, I did. And and you gave me this. He pulled a small strand of beads from his pocket and held it out to her as Marinette stroked them fondly. That's right. My lucky charm. She glanced up at him with a smile. You still carry it in your pocket? Always, he replied with a grin. He stepped closer, his eyes wide with a hopeful delight. So, wait, you really remember me? You remember everything? I... I think so. Somehow it's all coming back to me, Renette replied slowly, dark shapes and bursts of color shifting through her mind as she leafed through her memories, feeling more whole yet broken at the same time. That must be a lot to take in. Do you need to sit down? Marinette stood frozen, staring off into space as her breathing grew stilted, and a whirlwind of emotions swirled around her as she became trapped in a flood of memories. Master Fu, the miracle box, all the lies, the secrecy, the pain. Years of insecurities and doubts crept into her heart, while longings and disappointments clung to her soul. So many failures, so many mistakes. Caplanc! She stumbled backwards, and she barely noticed Adrian steady her into a seat on the bench, as unknown fears and devastating loss bombarded her already fragile emotions. Her partner... All the times she shouted at him and pushed him away. All the times he'd been hurt and frustrated by her, along with the rising tension that grown between them. How could he have acted like nothing was wrong? What hope was there for her now? Marinette became dimly aware of a strange hiccupy weeping noise, then realized it was coming from her, which made her cry even harder. Adrian sat quietly beside her, rubbing a comforting hand along her shoulder as she buried her face in her hands. I didn't think... It it would hurt this much. How did I live like this? Marinette choked out softly, squeezing her eyes shut in an effort to block out the memories. But that just made them easier to see. Hey, it wasn't all bad, Adrian said gently, leaning his head closer as he coaxed her to look up at him. Do you remember when we danced together at Chloe's birthday party? Marinette stared back at him, then blushed as warm pinks and golds washed away the gloom and she breathed in as it was replaced with a feeling of closeness and peace that he'd lovingly etched on her heart. Yeah. Adrian's voice grew stronger as he went on encouragingly. And do you remember when you designed an album cover for Jagged Stone, and we got to go to one of his concerts together? Marinette felt her spirits brighten as vibrant lights and thrilling energy mixed with a joyful sense of accomplishment and appreciation. Yeah, that was pretty wild. Adrian smiled. Almost as impressive as the time you designed that awesome hat for me and gave me the confidence to go out on stage. I probably couldn't have pulled that off if it wasn't for you. Really? It didn't feel like I did that much. But you always do so much, Marinette, Adrian said insistently, taking her hand between his and capturing her full attention as his eyes stared earnestly into her own. You're amazing, with and without your memory. It was such a heart to help others, and you have a thoughtfulness and creativity that shines through everything you do. 
I could list so many times when you've gone out of your way to make things better for someone else. You're kind, generous, funny, and one of the best friends I've ever had. But you're more than that, Marinette. Marinette let out a faint gasp as Adrian pulled her hands to his chest and held them above his heart. Do you remember the time you took me to the movies and helped me escape all those crazy fans? Marinette nodded mutely. Adrian's eyes softened as he stared at her with a tender smile. You've always been special to me, but I think that's when I started to realize there was more to you than I originally thought. I got to see a whole new side of you who was brave and determined and didn't hesitate to act. You looked out for me and cared for me in a way I always longed for, and you completely sacrificed your whole day and reputation just to defend me and give me a chance to see my mother. Warmth flooded through her as a rich affection and sincerity filled his words. Since then, you never cease to amaze me. I love your silliness and your smiles, as well as your strength and cleverness. Every moment I spend with you is a treasure, and I'm so glad I'm not the only one who remembers them anymore. He glanced down at their joined hands, and Marinette's heart fluttered erratically as his gaze moved back to hers, and he leaned closer with a peaceful smile. I love you, Marinette, more than you've ever known, more than even I knew, until now. Marinette stared at him in shock. You love me? He grinned as he tucked a strand of hair behind her ear. Well, you do remember that's your name, right? Marinette, he added in a loving whisper. Marinette took a half step back, her mind struggling to process as a current of delirious joy overcame her. Wait, so you mean all this time? He smiled encouragingly and Marinette held back a delighted squeal. So that means we can finally be together, and get married, and have three kids with a dog and a cat and a hamster named Friend. Marinette stopped short. Friend? One of the best I've ever had. Marinette stared in confusion and disbelief as she stared at Adrian, who was smiling at her affectionately. Marinette sprung to her feet as reality burst the strange bubble of fantasy she'd been folded in. Ah, what is wrong with me? Marinette? Adrian glanced up with concern, but Marinette brushed him off with an exaggerated smile. Oh, I, uh, just remembered I have to use the bathroom. Thanks for your help, Adrian. You were... Her voice grew soft as she added, really sweet. Without another word, she spun around and walked hurriedly away from him, her recent fantasy causing a different memory to surface in her mind. I like hamsters, too. She rushed to the bathroom and leaned heavily against the sink as her eyes filled with tears and her shoulders shook as she wept silently. She quickly brushed them away as the door quietly swung open, then let them fall again as Alia gathered her into a hug. They were quiet for a moment, then Alia said, Look, girl, I'm sorry for pressuring you about Adrian. If you're not ready... No, you were right, Alia. Renette sniffed. I was being a jerk, and Adrian is so nice. I know he'd never side with Chloe, and... Besides, I remember everything. Alia pulled back abruptly. Wait, what do you mean you remember everything? Like, everything everything? Marinette nodded solemnly and Alia squeezed her tighter. Oh, wow, and it's hitting you all at once, huh? No wonder you're a mess. Thanks, Marinette chuckled dryly. Do you need to go home? I was coming to tell you your presentation is supposed to be after Nino's, who's stalling for you right now. I'm sure Miss Boosty would understand if you... No, no, I want to do it. Marinette cut in, straightening with a determined sigh as she brushed his sleeve across her face. Maybe that'll help me forget about everything else for a bit, she added drearily. Alia gave her another squeeze. All right, if that's what you want. Let's go, you're gonna totally crush this. Marinette giggled as Alia enthusiastically took her arm and they raced back to the classroom. And that's why turtles move so slow. Nino's face brightened at the sight of them, and Marinette grinned as he picked up speed and realized he must have been dragging out his words in an effort to buy time for her. And live so long. So, if we want to get the most out of life, maybe we should slow down, too. He bowed with a flourish, and the room applauded, though most just seemed relieved it was over. Thank you, Nino, for that very thought-provoking take on turtles, and giving us all a lesson in patience. A few snickers spread across the room, and Nino sent Marinette and Alia a wink as he strode back to his seat. Marinette sat up straighter as the teacher's eyes leaned out on her with a bright smile. Ah, oh, Marinette, are you feeling up to giving your presentation today? Yes, ma'am, Marinette replied, swallowing a gulp as she gathered her papers and walked to the front of the class. 
She took a deep breath and smiled as she caught Alia shooting her thumbs up and stared confidently out across the rows of friendly faces eagerly waiting to hear what she had to say. When you think of fashion, what comes to mind? Fancy tailored coats and long expensive dresses? Or perhaps colorful magazines and big name brands? Her eyes started to Adrian, who was sitting attentively in the front row, then quickly shook herself back into focus. But today I want to share with you how the heart of fashion goes much deeper than simply keeping up with trends. Fashion gives us a chance to express ourselves, grow in confidence, and connect with others. By being purposeful in what we wear, we convey our values, beliefs, culture, and even the deepest parts of ourselves that we might be too afraid to express otherwise. Through fashion, each person has a chance to create their own style, feel a sense of joy and appreciation for what makes them unique. Fashion is linked to our very identity. Marinette gasped as a flash of red and white shot across her vision, and her head echoed in pain as she clutched the desk behind her and struggled to stand upright, a flood of voices and blurry memories pounding back and forth in her head. Our identities must remain secret. So you get to know their identities, but I can't? Your identities must be protected at all costs. There she is. Seize her miraculous. Your identity, Marinette. Now I'll know who you really are. Now you're breaking more than my heart, Marinette. The Guardian must know the identities of the other holders. It was our love that did this to the world. Hey, maybe if we kiss again, our memories will come back. I could never forgive myself if- Kanoir! He made his choice. What did you expect me to do? Marinette. Marinette. Marinette? Marinette's eyes flew open and she squinted blindly as she tried to adjust to the warm lights of the classroom and noticed the teacher's worried face hovering over her. Marinette, are you alright? You should go to the nurse's office. The teacher helped raise her to her feet, then looked out across the classroom. Do I have a volunteer to take her? A flood of hands shot up, but Adrian had leapt to his feet and Alia was lingering close by. I'll take her, Adrian announced loudly, and Alia sent Marinette a look, then glanced back at Adrian with a sly grin. All right, if you insist. Adrian walked over and Marinette's eyes widened as he offered his arm to her. If that's okay with you, he added softly. She nodded mutely and shyly allowed him to steady her as he helped to lead her out of the classroom. Marinette hesitated as they neared a bench in the school courtyard. Actually, is it okay if we just stop here? I don't think the nurse could help me, and I just need to rest for a minute. Of course, Adrian said readily, carefully guiding her down then taking a seat next to her. You don't have to stay here, Marinette said, ducking her head shyly as the color rose in her cheeks. I mean, I appreciate your help, but I should feel better in a few minutes, and I don't want to keep you from class. But I want to stay here with you. Marinette looked up in surprise, and Adrian hurriedly went on. I'm not going to leave you here by yourself, especially if you're not feeling well. He smiled understandingly as he leaned closer and asked gently, What's really going on, Marinette? Her eyes widened, and a strange frustration ran through her. Why did he have to be so perfect? She turned away with a shrug, feeling like a pouty child. They sat in silence for a bit, then Adrian said quietly, I really liked your speech about fashion. The beginning of it, anyway, though I'm sure the rest is good, too. They both continued to stare at the ground as he went on. I've been surrounded by the concept of fashion pretty much my whole life, but I never thought of appreciating it in that way until now. Before, it was always about deadlines, angles, and important business contracts. I knew people liked my dad's work and admired the superficial ads and photo shoots I'm in, but it always seemed so empty and rushed, and was also met with scowls and criticism. Marinette found herself listening attentively, and her eyes drifted to watch his hands as Adrian fiddled with them thoughtfully in his lap. I never really wanted to be a model. It always seemed kind of arrogant to act like I'm all that when I'm really not much different from anyone else. When I thought of fashion, I always thought of flashing lights, stuck-up faces, and haughty remarks. People dressed extravagantly and pretending to be better than everyone else. But now I see it differently. The fiddling stopped and she could tell he was looking at her, but chose to keep her eyes deliberately fixed on the ground. Thanks to you, I realized there's a whole different side to it that I never knew of before. Ever since I met you, you've had your own unique style and it's incredible. Marinette lowered her head even more, hoping her hair would cover the blush filling her face from the warmth in his voice. You helped me see the world in a new way. Like shining a light in a place that was once dark, or carving diamonds out of a broken rock. You are so special, Marinette, and my life would be so different without you. She turned to glance at him, which proved to be a mistake, as the endearingly earnest expression on his face was enough to make her heart melt. Her shoulders sank slightly as a weight fell to her stomach, 
and a sense of finality clouded her mind. She loved him, insanely, deeply, and possibly forever. How was she going to break it to Cat Noir? A light touch on her hand split through her thoughts like a beam of sunlight, and she smiled as Adrian gave her hand a fond squeeze. Thank you, Adrian. You're really special to me, too. They looked up as a bell rang and students started filling out into the courtyard. Well, I guess class is officially over, Adrian said, glancing through the doorway as a silver car pulled in front of the steps. Would you like us to give you a ride home? Marinette hopped anxiously to her feet. Oh no, you should be mine. I mean, I should be fine. My house is right around the corner. Exactly why we'd be no trouble. Please, I insist, Adrian said with a warm grin as he rose to stand beside her. Well, Marinette began, then glanced down to check at the phone buzzing at her waist. Say yes. Marinette looked over her shoulder and saw Alia and Nino grinning smugly, then turned back to Adrian with a shy smile. That would be great, thanks. They started towards the door, then paused, and Marinette watched curiously as Adrian dug through his shoulder bag. Just a sec, I know what's in here. What are you looking for? This, Adrian replied, grinning as he held up a small red tube. He lifted a clasp and flicked a button on it to reveal a small travel umbrella, and graciously offered it to her as they neared the oncoming torrent of rain. We can share it, Marinette said decisively, slipping closer to him as she held it over both of them. They made their way down the steps, and as they did, she noticed the cheerful red canvas was speckled with large black polka dots, and a pair of curly black antennas stuck out from the top. Is this a ladybug-themed umbrella? The canvas cast a rosy shadow between them, so it was hard to tell, but Marinette was almost certain Adrian's face grew slightly pink. Um, yeah. I didn't have any others on hand this morning, and I wasn't really planning to use it. I like to think it'll bring me good luck, and besides... He lowered his eyes at the faraway smile as he added, I'm kind of a fan of hers. Chapter 18 Trapped by the Truth Ladybug straightened his shoulders as she took a deep breath and narrowed her eyes into focus. She had to do this. She'd used the rain in her episode from yesterday as an excuse to put off going on patrol, and Kanawar had been very understanding, but that just made her heart sting more, and she knew she couldn't hide the truth from him no matter how much she wanted to keep pretending. There was a part of her that wanted things to stay the same as they had been these past few weeks, lighthearted and worry-free, mixed with daydreams and allowing herself to fall for the charming boy who'd always stayed by her side. But she remembered now, and there was no use denying it. She couldn't run from her past or forget the terrible consequences that could follow any misguided decision. She couldn't ignore the fact that a different blonde-haired and golden-hearted boy still carried her affections and played repeatedly through her mind. She was in love with Adrian, she reminded herself, and it wouldn't be fair to Cat Noir to only offer him half her heart. So she would harden it, and she had all those times before. Pretend she was immune to his advances and unmoved by his feelings. She would keep them both safe, and she would put things back to the way they were meant to be. Two heroes working as partners who'd become good friends, and nothing more. But she still wanted to break it to him easily, and she hoped her old self wouldn't be too much of a bitter comparison to her forgetful one. Light footsteps sounded behind her, and she turned around to see her partner striding towards her with an oblivious smile on his face and a fond look in his eyes as his dark form stood out against the vivid cool blue of the late afternoon sky. Feline better, milady. I hope the rain yesterday didn't dampen your spirits. He took a seat beside her and asked more gently, How did school go? Ladybug glanced away self-consciously. Well, that's actually what I wanted to talk to you about. Kenoir watched her attentively, but instead of continuing, she fixed her gaze on the street below and nodded pointedly. See anything familiar? Kenoir furrowed his brow and looked curiously towards the ground. Um, not really. Unless you're referring to that pigeon over there, but they all look alike to me. Ladybug couldn't help chuckling a bit as she shook her head. No, silly, I meant the place. Oh. Kenoir scratched his head as he scanned the area. I'm sure we've come here before. Maybe this'll jog your memory. Ladybug tossed up her yo-yo and lightly bounced it against his head. Ow! Hey! His eyes widened and he grinned. Oh, I know. This is where we first met. But wait, how would you... He trailed off in confusion, then gasped. Did you get your memories back? 
Ladybug smiled shyly. Yep, back to boring old me, kitty cat. Kanoar's face brightened with delight. Wow, that's... Wow, I'm so glad to have you back. He reached as if to pull her into an enthusiastic hug, but drew back and tucked his hand to the back of his head. He seemed to have a brief struggle with himself, but it quickly faded as his former confidence smoothed over his indecision, and he gallantly placed a soft kiss to her hand as he added, And you are far from boring, milady. You're the most captivating and delightful girl I've ever met, no matter what your memory holds. Ladybug sat frozen for a moment as two pools of pink bloomed across her cheeks, and she savored the feeling of her hand in his for an instant before slowly pulling it away as a vice wrapped around her heart. She didn't have to look at him to see the wounded look in his eyes, but he seemed almost resigned to it as he hunched back to his normal position and stared out across the city. So, how did you get your memories back? He asked, trying to sound cheerful, and she could tell some of his energy had faded, though he was still holding on to hope. A hope she would have to destroy. Ladybug hesitated, gritting her teeth and wishing she could spare him the details, but he deserved to know. I met that boy. Oh. There was no need to ask who that boy was. Kanawar's heart sank and he ducked his head in an attempt to hide the pain that twisted across his face. He felt like the wind had been knocked out of him with all his hopes and dreams dashed to pieces on the floor. Or the ground. The same ground where Ladybug had first crashed into his life and captured his soul with a clumsy and wonderful curl of her yo-yo, remained forever out of reach. He stifled a weary sigh and realized Ladybug was still talking. Her words came out in a tumbled, anxious row, and he felt his heart soften towards her as he picked out the redness around her eyes and the apology in her voice. So then I tried to avoid him, but I felt horribly guilty, and then he found me in the library and I stupidly trip over some books, but instead of laughing at or ignoring me, he was so kind and caring, and I guess somehow it triggered the memory of when I first met him, and it had been raining that day too, and when I touched his hand, it just felt like when he gave me his umbrella. But, oh, uh, this probably all sounds so pathetic and selfish, and I'm so thankful for all you did for me without my memories, but I have to be honest with you now, and I'm still in love with him. She breathed in deeply as she finally ran out of words and folded her hands solemnly into her lap. Ken Noir sat frozen as his eyes drifted to her face and his heart stilled almost to a stop. The library? An umbrella? Her words echoed in the silence that followed and something clicked in his head. Ladybug had always been a mystery to him and they both strove to keep it that way. But this story sounded too familiar. It was almost exactly like what had happened between him and Marinette. Marinette, who had a head concussion and lost her memory. His heart began beating faster as more pieces fell into place. Of course, it made so much sense. He gaped at her in awe, and as he did, a soft, wispy breeze blew through her hair and tussled her bangs to reveal a slim, faded scar above her left eyebrow. The same cut he had seen on Marinette when he visited her with flowers, and again when they stood together on her balcony. The stammering, the blushing, the kindness, the cleverness. It was all her. Ladybug was Marinette. Marinette had gotten her memories back when he helped her at the library. And Ladybug had gotten her memories back by meeting the boy she loved. Moments ago, Cat Noir thought his mind would explode, but now it seemed as though every part of him wanted to sing. It was him! He was the boy Ladybug loved. And not only that, but Ladybug was Marinette. His Marinette. The only girl he'd ever hoped could be hiding beneath the spotted red mask. Nothing could be more perfect. This was a disaster. Ladybug had studiously kept her gaze away from Cat Noir after stumbling all over her explanation and cutting through their partnership with a knife. But she could sense him staring at her and finally dared to peek in his direction. Her forehead creased in worry and confusion, as instead of a mournful expression or angry sadness, there was only stunned awe on his face, and his eyes glittered with more joy and hope than had shown before he'd had his dreams crushed. Ladybug shifted uneasily as he continued to stare at her, his mouth slightly open as he sat frozen with a mixed expression of wonder and shock, and she was tempted to wave a hand in front of his face to make sure he was still conscious. Please, just say something. It's okay if you're angry or hurt by this, and I'm really sorry for... No, no, it's okay, Kenora interrupted, finally breaking out of his stupor and raising his hands reassuringly. 
Really? He added with a wide smile. Why was he smiling like that? Did she break her kitty? Was he forcing himself to be happy for her? This was worse than having him be angry or devastated. Seeing him try to be happy simply for her sake tore away the little resolve she had left and shred her heart to pieces. Ladybug ducked her head. I'm so sorry, Cat Noir. Wait, for what? He called, but she had already turned away and swung herself into the distance, hot tears adding to the sting that mercilessly pierced her soul. She studiously avoided the fateful billboard plastering their forgotten love across the city as she swiftly made her way home, though she couldn't stop her mind from drifting back to how easily she had embraced the idea, and how selflessly and graciously Cat Noir had explained to her the truth. She hopped through the hatchway and wearily plopped onto her bed, where she was immediately greeted by a familiar caring smile from one of the photos she'd neglected to take down. Ladybug groaned as she buried her face in the pillows and clutched the blankets closer to her chest. Could she really love Adrian when a certain cat had already curled his way into her heart? How could she make this right? Would this pain ever stop? I mean, really, how many blue-eyed girls get bonked with amnesia every day? I don't know. I guess it's just because I knew about Marinette's injury that ladybugs didn't seem that weird to me. I mean, since it happened to both of them, it wouldn't be that uncommon, and I just thought maybe they were in the same accident. The same accident? Kit, do you hear yourself? They're the same person! I know! Marinette is in love with me, Adrian said, holding his hand to his chest with a gleeful sigh. Uh, that's literally the only thing you got out of that conversation, isn't it? Adrian shook his head with a smile. Well, it's the main thing that matters anyway. Ply crossed his arms irritably. To you, maybe, but Miss Pigtails over there still has no idea who you are. And unless you let the cat out of the bag, I don't see how this is going to work. Adrian paused, then resumed pacing giddily. Easy. I'll just ask her out as Adrian. If I'm the boy she loves, she'll have no reason to say no, and we could just keep our superhero sides out of it. Ply sighed. I hate to tell you this, kid, but I think she does have a reason to say no. Adrian stood still with a wounded expression. What do you mean? She's in love with you. Adrian's face grew puzzled. Yeah, I know. That's what makes it such a good idea. Plag flew over and bumped him on the nose. What I mean is she's in love with both of you, and now she won't be able to pick either one. What? Come on, kid, you saw the way she's been acting towards Cat Noir all these weeks, and you can't pretend she didn't jump at the chance to be a couple and how disappointed she was after you told her she weren't. Without normal you in the picture, she had no problem falling for your hero self, and all those feelings didn't go away just because she got her memories back. Adrian gasped with a mixture of wonder and worry. Do you really think so, Black? Would I be wasting all this time not eating cheese if I didn't? Adrian glanced down as another memory surfaced in his mind. For whatever it's worth, I hope she picks you. Adrian sat down defeatedly. What do I do, Black? You're right. Myrna is in love with me. But I can't have a relationship with her as a superhero without putting her in danger, and Ladybug, well, Marinette, would never forgive me if I revealed my identity to her, plus she refuses to see me that way. Black held up a tiny hand. First off, who says you have to be in a relationship right away? I get it, she's the love of your life and all that. But if you've waited this long, you can wait a little longer. And besides, she might come to terms with this on her own. Of course, I wouldn't mind waiting, and I still value her friendship more than anything. But what am I supposed to do? Pretend like nothing's changed, even though I know her secret and hold the power to make us both happy? I love her so much, Black, and I hate to think that she's tearing herself up about something that has such a simple fix. Oh, and what fix would that be? Adrian blushed as he ran a hand along his neck. Well, if her problem is she's in love with two people, maybe I can get her to see that she's in love with the same one. But what about your secret identity? Plag asked warily. Adrian shrugged. She'd put it together on her own eventually, just like I did, and it's only fair that we both would know. An unusual spark of enthusiasm glinted in the Kwame's eyes as he hovered near the window, and a mischievous smile sped across his face. All right, have it your way, lover boy. But if Tiki asks, you can't say I didn't try to stop you. Even if I have been waiting for this longer than mold grows on cheese, he added in a gleeful mutter. Adrian rolled his eyes with a smile, then punched out his fist as he exclaimed, Plague, claws out!
thanks for listening. And I'm so excited to be finally so close to finishing this story. Hope you've enjoyed and stay tuned because something exciting is going to happen next. Bye.